All right, so let's talk about solo shooting a wedding. It's oftentimes our first foyer into wedding filmmaking, but it's also probably one of the hardest things you can do as a wedding filmmaker. Today, we're gonna be answering all of the really important questions about how to solo shoot a wedding. Trust me, it's gonna be a great BTS video. Let's do it. This is gonna be the best <laughs> 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 We're going to Dunkin' Donuts. That was really tough. Ice regular. Guys, we're going to the building. All right, y'all. So welcome to our equipment closet, AKA the Stop Go Love vault. And I just wanted to quickly go through our kit for tomorrow. I won't bring this kit to every single one of my weddings. Sometimes I want to bring a little bit more equipment. But in this case, really, we've whittled it down um, to be a, essentially a little minimalistic kit. You guys know how much we love minimalism here on the Wedding Film School Show. And we're just gonna run through kind of the core principles that I think about every time I need to go out and shoot a solo wedding. The first one is going to be efficiency. We want to make sure that we are essentially only bringing the things that we need to a wedding because I'm going to be by myself. I have to be the person to carry it from point A to point B to point C. And if you have to be taking multiple trips during the day, you know that you're just losing out on shooting opportunities. And that's what we're trying to avoid with this kit. The second thing is gonna be speed. I want to be able to pick up my camera and shoot in literally two seconds. Flip my camera switch on and be able to get to a shot. We're there to shoot, so we wanna be able to shoot very, very quickly. And then the third principle is going to be quality. And this one's kind of an obvious thing. Of course you wanna be shooting an awesome wedding, but a lot of times if you're speeding up your process, if you're trying to be a little bit more efficient and bringing less gear, um, quality can be the thing that often suffers. So we still wanna be shooting an awesome wedding. And I think between all the gear that we have here, it kind of allows us to balance those three things out. So let's talk about some of the gear that we have in front of me, because I know the comment section is gonna be asking about this stuff. Uh, first thing is the cameras we're gonna be using. We're using three Fujifilm X-T4s. A great new system from Fuji I've just fallen in love with over the last year. I think this is a great camera for you guys who are first starting out as a wedding filmmaker. Uh, it's a great price point, really quality image that Fujifilm is able to make. Let's hop into the glass that we're gonna be bringing. I'm gonna be bringing a 24 to 70 uh, Canon lens. This is the uh, 2.8, uh, along with the Fringer EF FX2 adapter, which allows me to still have banging autofocus. I have here the 70 to 200 2.8. This is the Mark II uh, from Canon. Although I think we're gonna switch out for the Fujifilm equivalent, which is a 50 to 140 2.8. Both are solid lenses, but they have completely different looks. And then the last lens we're gonna be using is the Fujifilm 23 millimeter on our gimbal. And this is essentially a 35 millimeter equivalent on a full frame lens. I love this lens. I think it's a perfect kind of in-between for shooting gimbal work where you're able to get up nice and close, uh, get some really nice shallow depth of field, and it's just a banging lens. Autofocus is uh, pretty dynamite on it as well. We're gonna be bringing a couple different zoom products. The first thing is the H6, just a great six channel recorder that we're able to plug XLR quarter inch cables into. If you wanted to, you could plug your lavalier microphones into them. What we're gonna be bringing for labs though, is the all new Zoom F2, and these are the Bluetooth versions. Um, let's talk about some of the lights. Uh, we're gonna be bringing two of these Practolite 602s, all around fantastic light. And the thing kind of tying everything together is gonna be my Holdfast Moneymaker. I've had this one for ages. We're gonna be using it tomorrow because this is gonna be what allows me to have three cameras on my person at any given time kind of looking like an old school, you know, wedding videographer with a photo vest. This is the modern version of that. So fantastic piece of gear. We'll dive into it a little bit more tomorrow. But this is pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna get this packed up now and we'll see you guys in the morning. Day two, baby. Here we are <laughs> in our back alley. And uh, we are taking all of our equipment over to the bride. She's gonna be getting ready in about, meh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, as you can see, I'm carrying all my own gear. I'm carrying my uh, Pelican case full of all my equipment, my lenses, et cetera. And then I have a shoulder bag for a couple of my tripods, a couple light stands, but this is everything. I even have a hand to carry my Chinese food uh, over to the venue. We're gonna eat on the way over. Let's head over to the venue and uh, we'll say what's up. All right, so I know exactly what you're thinking. Chinese food on a wedding day? 
It's kind of risky business, right? But here at Wedding Film School, we're all about taking the risks, whatever that means. Welcome to the suburbs. We're actually gonna be starting our filming of the bride here this afternoon. And typically when I arrive, I don't like to lug a lot of gear into a place like this, into a house, someone's home. I would much rather set up outside and just bring a few cameras in. Travel pretty light, especially when it's just me. I don't wanna lug everything in, take a lot of time doing that. I don't wanna lug it back out when I'm ready to go. Essentially, I wanna be really fast, be really light. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna throw the cameras on my hold fast, get everything that I really need, and head inside, say hello. So let's do that right now. So I think it's worth mentioning um, my own bag that I like to carry um, on a wedding day. This is essentially a bag that I'll have at, on me at all times that I just hook into my holdfast here. And it has batteries, it has extra cards, it has a multi-tool, just essentially anything that I would need on a wedding day so that I don't have to run to my big case. Everything I need will just be right on me the entire day. Let's make magic. Critical, very important. Hey, Hi. happy wedding day. Yeah, are like, Finally here, I know, it like Hi. flies, right? How are things coming along? So far so good? Just chilling, I mean, there's like more time than we thought. Gives you more time to just like Feel worry cool. about things. I'm yeah. not that stressed. First order of business, we said hi. Now I'm gonna be shooting just some detail shots. Knock these out so that when they're done with hair and makeup, I can hop over to them and get them when they're a little bit more put together because if you don't know, if you shoot a bride before her hair and makeup is done, you could get screamed at, so we want to avoid that. We're gonna do the details first, and then hop over to them. I kind of love the boning of the dress. I think that's what they call it, which is a hilarious name for it. But I like it. I think it looks really kind of nice and delicate. Let me figure out how to get this nice roll going on. So in a room like this, where you know there's a lot of natural light, I'll probably take it from that window over there, put it in this window over here, which has a little bit more flat light. So I'm gonna get this shot first though, because they set up a nice dress window <laughs> over here. Yeah, then we'll move the dress after that. I like this light a little bit more. It's a little bit more even. And I just love the tooling on this dress. It's nice and soft, so I'm gonna get some kind of cool movement shots. Kind of give us a little bit of nice airy kind of look. Same thing with this tooling. Um, white hanger might be nice. Okay, so I like this corner. I think the light looks nice and flat, really nice. Um, so I'm actually gonna move this out, use this cool little table here, maybe use a little tray or something, I don't know, to get the rest of the details. You just gotta make sure that if you move something that you end up moving items back. I got permission to be able to move something like a lamp because someone might get mad at you if you don't ask permission. If you're in a hotel room, I never ask permission. <laughs> Generally, if I'm shooting details like this, I like to get it all in kind of one vignette, because then I can just get close-ups of all of them and quickly rattle through them, as opposed to doing like a different setup for the shoes, different shoot for the um, jewelry, different shot for the hair piece, whatever. It just makes your job a technique a little bit faster and easier. I love using the art of some foreground to be able to do some reveals on detail shots, especially something like this. This feels pretty nice and luxurious. And if it's in 60, usually it looks pretty nice. Kind of playing around with these today for the first time. Uh, they're pretty fun. Uh, these are called fractals. I just got these on Amazon. They kind of give it like a little bit of a glare um, so that if you have a detail shot or just in general, a shot that you think is kind of boring, just adding a little bit of kind of shimmer, a little bit of shine to the corner of your frame. Um, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. So right now, I'm filming some of the bridesmaids um, during their preparations. And 
This is like the perfect example of like, kind of can be weird lighting, mixed lighting conditions, where I'm getting some outside lighting hitting her face, but it's kind of giving her a nice little silhouette um, also, but then also behind her, she has that bad yellow light too. So typically what I would do in this case is I would probably stop recording and I would head over and uh, turn off those lights behind her. So let's do that, and then we'll change our color temperature to something different. Hi. Did you just say hi to me? Yeah, I did. I like this look a little bit more. It's just a little bit more natural, a little less weird mixed lighting. OK, so we finished shooting the details. I got a little bit of getting ready. I typically don't like to do a whole lot of hair and makeup before makeup is done. Um, we are going to head over to the guys and just film a little bit of them. Something that if I'm solo shooting, it's kind of something I'll do sometimes if they're close enough and if we have enough time. Uh, otherwise, I'll just film the groom a little bit later in the day. It seems like we have enough time. We're doing really well. It's currently 1.45. We'll head over to the guys, probably shoot for like 15, 20 minutes, and then head back over. And by that time, hair and makeup here will probably be wrapping up and get the dress and do the rest of the uh, ladies' preparation. So let's get her done. We just got over here with the guys. We're gonna, just going to get a little bit of them hanging out, doing some portraits, and then we'll shoot back to the girls. Honestly, I just keep this pretty simple. It's not really a lot going on. The light sucks, but we'll get some of the groom individually, maybe get some of them hanging out together, laughing, but uh, we'll keep it pretty simple. There we go. There you go. <laughs> oh, you're in my way. <laughs> Look at the crutches. Just keep on looking at the camera. Give it a little smile. Cool. I'm going to do one more of those. You got that down. You got that soft smile. Okay, you good. <laughs> I like it. Good. Perfect, man. That's it. That's it. Good stuff, man. Okay, so we just got um, some of Mark out back. We are going to head inside. He's gonna read the letter, and um, yeah, just film him reading that letter out loud. So, let's go inside. All right, I'm gonna throw this guy on you here. Yeah. Go ahead and just read it through for me. Your sense of humor, your incredible work ethic, your confidence, your kindness to those who are the underdog, and your refusal to take no for an answer. Plus, you're super tall, and your eyes are the most amazing thing ever. And I can't wait to see you and our baby someday. Okay, so things are done here. We're here for 15, 20 minutes, and we are heading back to the bride. She's gonna be getting in her dress shortly, so let's get it done. One of the things that I love about the whole fast system, the money maker, whatever, is the fact that I can get in my car and still have my cameras on me. So if I am in a rush, if we are behind, we can just pull up to the spot park quick and be ready to shoot in literally five seconds. In general, I say we're on, pretty good, uh, on a pretty good schedule right now. Okay, so we're back here with Catherine, our photographer. Say hi, Catherine. Hello. Um, still waiting on the bride to do some final touches for hair and makeup. Um, and we have a little bit more time. The sun is really nice. The light is really nice in this room right now. So we're just getting a couple more detailed shots because the light is a little bit better. Uh, we are gonna hop in do some shots with the bride, and so that's probably going to be in about 10, 15 minutes. My process of dog loving is uh, very deep. Good boy. This dog is perfect. He is set. He has like razor sharp teeth. Look at how sharp those teeth are. They're like piranha teeth. Do you know how old they are, Elise? She's She's here. Here. I'm covering her face. <laughs> kind of tall for me. <laughs> so pretty. Okay. Look over here and smile real quick. Okay, yeah, yep, go for it. <laughs> Okay, do you want her to... Uh, just need your hair up a little more. Okay. And you're gonna have to clip the top piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I have to... 
Now I have to actually keep doing that. That was cute. Oh. That was a cute thing. <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. Cause that, that's why I'm doing such a hard time right now. So we're about to do a uh, bridesmaids reveal. Uh, bride just got in a dress in that super yellow room. Brutal. Um, but we're gonna be up here. We're gonna get this right. shot really quick. So, and then we're gonna redo a lot of those bridal details in the nicer room downstairs with better light. So. I just want to get the same shot I got of Mark, get of her in that corner. Okay. And go ahead and look up. Love that. Go ahead and look out the window really quick. Yeah, pull your hair back a little bit. Great. So I don't actually put a microphone on the brine when I'm shooting her. We don't have a white lavalier microphone. I stay away from that. I don't like to put a cheap $150 mic on a three, $4,000 dress. So uh, what we're gonna be using today is the Zoom H2N. And I'm just gonna place this fairly close to her to be able to get a little bit of her reading her letter. It might sound a little bit different, but we can probably match them pretty closely in post. So that's what we're gonna do. In one second, Elise. All right, Elise, whenever you're ready. Dear Elise, I've been wishing for this day since long before we even started talking. You are such a treasure and are everything a man could look for. So reliable and so faithful, and I know I can count on you to be by my side and push me to be at my best. Okay, that was really good. That was awesome. We really got some cool shots. Um, got the shots that I really wanted to. I think typically when we start shooting, um, I don't know, it takes me a little bit of time to kind of warm up and feel out my shots. But those shots that we just got in there were really great. Obviously, the bride getting into her dress was a little bit of uh, yellowy, uh, which isn't my favorite. I wish we would have been able to bring her down in the room, which was brought up to her, but she wanted to have a surprise for her bridesmaids coming down, which was a nice moment. So we kind of had to trade one thing for the other. But overall, uh, brought her into the nice room with the nice light and we're able to get some pretty cool shots of her in there uh, afterwards. So it's all about compromise, baby. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're actually gonna head over to the um, venue. We're gonna get a couple shots of, uh, we're actually gonna do a first look. We're gonna head over, we're gonna get some shots of the bridal party, and then we're heading to a church for the ceremony after that. So we're about 20 minutes behind schedule, which is pretty normal. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we'll see what it looks like by the time we get over there. Let's do it. Uh, so we are in the middle of a field. Uh, we're gonna do the first look over this way. I'm gonna set up my gimbal to be a wide shot. And then I'm gonna shoot them handheld. Because no one can tell the groom that they're doing something wrong. Yeah. Ever. Except for, except for, well. except for the bride. See, you're learning. I it's heard okay. it. I good. figured that out a while ago. <laughs> yep, I like it. Good. Me too. I can't even. Are you gonna cry like a little baby? I'm gonna still be crying. Have you hit this much before? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. You're okay. You're okay. I feel a lot better. Wait, you know this? Yes, very. Very, very, very. I don't think I'm gonna make it. So that was kind of brutal. <laughs> Outside of me planting a uh, gimbal landmine for the photographer to trip on. <laughs> These are new cameras. To me, this is the first time I'm using this lens, this camera in a super bright setting like this. So I switched over to the EVF so I could actually see what I was looking at and make sure my exposure was dynamite. So that's why I switched it over to just my eye view. Um, 
with the image stabilization. It, lo it looks really good. It's exactly what I wanted to get. We're gonna go shoot some couple portraits with a couple now and get some real magic. Flirt with each other a little bit. Elisa looks great. Love that. You guys lean in for just a little peck right there. Love that. Beautiful. I'm just gonna get some as I'm walking too. Go ahead. I love these Weeble Labs because you have this interchangeable handles. So I can double handle it and get a good grip. And then if I want to come down, I can. But I like these ones a little bit better than your DJI Ronin S's or kind of the more samurai sword versions. These give you a little bit more versatility in your shots, in my opinion. Can you guys both like look that direction towards the greenhouse, kind of like really pensive like. Mark, you look really tough. You look oh, really tough, thanks. you know? Except your bow tie keeps going crooked. All right, guys, looking at the building, just kind of like you're looking ahead to your future. <laughs> All right, good. And look at each other there. Love that. Good, and lean in for a little kiss right there. Good, smile, great, love that, perfect. Can you hold right your uh, bouquet in front of you, Elise? Like here? Okay, now I don't care about anything else. It's all good. Everyone should do it first. They're all dancing. I know you guys did it. I love it. it. Don't know how you... Okay. I love it here. We're in the middle of bridal party photos, which um, honestly, usually I don't like to get a whole lot of them, but I do want to see some faces. I'll probably hop on my... 50 to 140 just to see some faces uh, people smiling that kind of stuff yeah and then we're gonna hop over to the church we have 50 minutes before we have to be there five zero minutes and uh so everything's going well yeah we're right on schedule i do love this light i love light like this Super backlight. So I don't know about you guys, but I hate walking photos. Everyone just look at me and smile. I hate Stop smile. I hate them so much. I can't stand Can them. You guys I don't know what to do. Do you gimbal them? They never look good. good. Why do they do that? They never look good. No, I don't you're know. good. You're not in the shot. <laughs> 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 Okay, so one thing that I see a lot, especially with filmmakers that are first starting out, is white balance, white balance issues. This is a really challenging uh, kind of lighting situation because the sun keeps on popping out and then it's cloudy, sunny, cloudy, back and forth. So I think if you're able to set up your custom white balances for cloudy and then sunny, switch back and forth super fast, that's probably the fastest and easiest way to do it. That's what I'm doing currently. Um, but if you keep it on auto white balance, auto white balance has come a long way. But to me, it's still not there quite yet. Like right now, if I was gonna shoot this on auto white balance, it would probably uh, make the dress look pretty blue. Um, and I'm cranked up to 7,000 Kelvins right now, and it looks nice and sunny. It looks a little bit uh, warmer than it does in real life, which is my preference for shooting this kind of situation. It looks really nice with the browns on the back, um, as you can see from the footage, so. You guys wanna get some coffee or something? Let's go! <laughs> We're going to Dunkin' Donuts. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Yeah, hi, can I get a uh, medium ice regular with caramel swirl? I wasn't playing, people. So we just finished shooting the bride and groom. We just finished getting some Dunkin' Donuts. Very important caffeine break. Uh, and we're gonna head in, we're gonna set up for the ceremony. We have approximately 25 minutes to set up, get inside, do a couple tripods. This is everything that I have all day, again, three cameras on my person, a tripod bag, and then my Pelican case here. So again, I don't need to make multiple trips. Everything is super organized. So let's head inside, we'll knock this out. So obviously, very dark church, very kind of odd lighting. Uh, so we're gonna have to work with that a little bit. As far as camera setup goes, we're gonna do our gimbal camera 
It's essentially a wide angle, 35 millimeter equivalent um, that we put on the side. That's essentially our cutaway camera. I'm gonna throw another camera on the other side at probably more of like a 80 millimeter, roughly. Actually, a little bit more. I think it's more like a 100 millimeter. On the other side, they'll be a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna hand hold my uh, 70 to 200. Uh, probably stay pretty center aisle, pretty tight, pretty close in. And uh, that's gonna be kind of our camera setup. So we're getting a little bit of everything. Again, it's just me. So I would say the most important thing is knowing how much you can handle. Like, I know I can handle three cameras very easily. And so we're gonna make magic with uh, what we got. So let's do it. So for my line microphone, they've very graciously agreed to uh, send me a copy of the audio. But if you're a wedding film professional, you know not to trust anybody in the world. So I also ask them for my own line as well. Uh, this is a Zoom H6. Gonna be plugging right into their board and I am going to actually be splitting it. So do two different channels straight in here so that it can have a high and a low if someone doesn't know how to speak into a microphone, and we'll be good to go. Um, and then I'm also going to throw a recorder onto the groom himself um, just to be able to get their vows if they're moving around and someone doesn't give them the microphone to speak into. So that's our audio setup, pretty straightforward, pretty easy, backup upon backup, should be good to go. What we're gonna do, because these cameras have a 30 minute record time, I'm just floating around. I have two cameras on tripods on either side, so I'm actually gonna time myself and make sure that if it's going over 30 minutes that I'm bouncing back and forth, stopping and starting the camera during parts that, I don't know, would be a little bit more boring. That's the plan. We're just waiting for the bride to walk down the aisle. So that was actually pretty easy. We're running three cameras by myself. Three minutes after the ceremony, everything's packed up, ready to go. I have my three camera system, my gimbal, and we're gonna shoot, go shoot some families. So we're gonna go out back. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so lucky. Ellie, what's up there? What is that? It's a hurricane? We finished the ceremony, went fairly well, minus the lighting situation, it wasn't that big of a thing. But no kind of camera stoppage, audio sounded fantastic. So now we're just outside, we're trying to get the last little bit of the light. You know, family portraits are um, important, um, but definitely not my favorite. So whenever I get them in light like this, at least you have that plus of just having a good looking shot, even though as far as the storyline, probably not my favorite. All right, so we just finished family photos in like 15 minutes in the back. Came out great, really easy. We're gonna throw our stuff into the car, head over to the venue, head inside, and then uh, start this party up. So we're here, we're in the greenhouse here in Menden, Massachusetts. And um, we're gonna shoot some detail shots. The key here is just knock these shots out as fast as possible, make them really cool looking and uh, try to get as many detail shots before people arrive. So people are gonna start leaking in, so I'm gonna hop to it.
with an environment like this, we have super warm light inside, super blue light outside. So you just have these like polar opposites. So I'm trying to isolate it to make it so that it, it doesn't look weird in the shots where I have to have both. And then also in the close-up shots, not trying to combine the two. So kind of isolating my light as much as possible so that I'm not getting this weird looking mixed light kind of deal. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me right now, but Zoom H6, plugging into the Bose speaker system here. They have a mini board, pretty straightforward. I think it's a quarter inch out. We'll find out. But doing this, this is gonna be our speaker, uh, or our line mic. Uh, again, we're gonna be splitting our quarter inch cable. Um, so we can use channel one and channel two so that we have two different channels and they both won't be peeking out so that if someone holds the microphone here and they're really loud, we can use the lower channel. If someone holds the microphone really far away from them, you can barely hear them. We'll use the higher channel. That's what we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna start recording right now because I literally have 12 hours and 13 minutes on this card. And if I'm in a pinch, if things just kind of happen right away, I don't want to have to run over, start my audio recorder. I actually do bring a backup microphone. This is the uh, H2N. So two channels, a left and right channel. So I'm actually gonna put this over here because this is actually the only speaker they have here. So we're gonna have a backup. So should anything happen to that initial recorder, we have a backup just in case. And I'm gonna put it actually as close to the speaker as I possibly can. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> then we'll get this party started. I want to get this tripod ready, set it up so that when toast happen, when first dance happens, I have it just ready to rock and roll. And this is what I'm going to use for the toast. Um, I'm going to throw my gimbal right on here again, 35 millimeter equivalent essentially um, of the riding groom. Kind of keep it out of the way a little bit, but uh, so that the photographer still has a lane to shoot. That's critical. So Zion actually makes these quick release plates. I use them all the time. I love them. Um, it kind of looks weird on a tripod, but it's very efficient. If I just want my gimbal, it's as simple as whoop, popping it off and I can get my gimbal ready to go. I'm gonna break this down to the smallest setting. Adjust my gimbal to where I want it to be. And we're good to go, easy. All right guys, let's talk about lighting. Uh, so what we have tonight is two Practilite 602s. Um, this is gonna be used to key light and backlight both the speakers for the toast and then also first dances, that kind of stuff. The reason why I love these lights, the Fresnel feature on them looks great on camera, has a good flare, all that kind of stuff. But I do love the fact that I can control these from my phone. Having that control without moving around, just flipping open my phone um, is really critical. It allows me to be super fast, and get the shots that I need without having to actually move physically to do that. So in my brain, I'm making a line, that 180 degree line, which is essentially right where the bride and groom are gonna be sitting, where Elise and Mark are gonna be um, sitting, eating, um, and then it kind of goes right down the middle. So I'm gonna put my lights over on this side of the room, and then I'm gonna shoot on that side of the room this way. And Personally, that's the way I like my lighting to look. A little bit more backlight gives a little bit of shadow. So it's essentially, it's a good look to me. Um, I'll show you obviously what it looks like on camera when I actually shoot them. I'm thinking, and I have to run it by the DJ, but I'm thinking that uh, the person speaking is probably gonna be, there's a mic stand over them on the left side. Um, so if we put our lights here, this is gonna be the key light for the speaker and for the bride and groom. And then I'm gonna put another light over by the speaker over there, kind of backlighting everyone over that direction. So that's the idea. We'll see if it works. All right, so this here is the app by Kinotenic, which honestly is probably one of my favorite production apps ever made. No lie. Um, I'm gonna turn on my lighting system here. Simple, it's super fast. That's my blue light. That's my orange light. I'm essentially just matching the ambience in here. And then if I want to turn it off, it's a click of a button and it's done. So super fast, super responsive. I find with a lot of these apps, they're not very responsive. They're not very fast. And you know, speed is the name of the game when you're doing production like this, where things can happen at the flip of a switch. So I love my Kinotenic app. It's set up perfectly. I'm gonna turn it off, put it in my pocket and have it ready to go for the dances, which are happening right here. And then the speeches, which are happening right here. Everything's all set up, good to go. Audio is recording. 
Let's go get some of the people at cocktail hour. Speeches, dances, they're about to get started. I'm gonna put my camera, which I've put off to the side. It's already set up to be perfect in perfect position for toasts, dances, etc. cetera. Um, we're gonna set that up, be ready to go as soon as they kind of roll into the dance floor because you know how these things go. They just kind of happen, no one tells you. Audio's already recording and we're gonna roll, so let's do it. So that was really tough. Um, lighting looked great. Uh, my camera looked great, but I uh, had some trouble with my camera and the dances um, in that. They moved in a way that I didn't like. <laughs> uh, so that was tough. Uh, I think that is a challenge. I really didn't have a safety shot, essentially. Mine was a little bit risky, being a 35 millimeter, and I just put it too close to them, so they ranged off of uh, my shot. I think word to the wise is make sure you have a safety shot, shoot a little bit wider than you probably have to. If you're gonna be cutting you know, individual edits and want multi-camera stuff going on, um, but yeah, I'm gonna set up my camera angles for the toasts now, because those haven't happened yet. Set up my lighting and um, yeah, get ready for that side of the day. Oh boy. Those are all lies, except for the older part. But I got them beat by a minute, so. <laughs> but I'll keep this brief because the longer I talk, the worse it's gonna get. Congratulations to the both of you and uh, welcome to the family. Praying for my sister, and she was a little girl at the time when I was there, she was three. Okay, so that thing happened where <laughs> the DJ essentially introduces the people who are gonna be doing speeches um, while we were having dinner. So luckily we had our cameras in position. We just had to go up and essentially turn them on, put them in the right spot, turn them on, uh, push play, and we were recording. Uh, so we probably missed the first like five seconds of the speech. Totally fine in our case, but in general, making sure that you're ready for that to happen is ideal. They don't really have like a real DJ tonight. Um, it's kind of like a family friend situation. So there's no dancing. Um, people are just gonna be hanging out. So really we're just filming people having a good time. I might probably shoot a little bit more B-roll. I mean, this is a pretty laid back wedding, pretty laid back day in general. I'm able to drink a delicious cappuccino, so I'm happy. And um, yeah, overall, tough to complain. Yeah, good. Okay guys, so thank you for watching. We're pretty much done here. Um, there's no dancing, there's no DJ because of COVID, thank you very much. But we're just hanging out. We're getting some people just, you know, getting some more details. Anything that really pops up, people looking like they're having fun. Uh, but we're probably gonna get out of here in the next 10 minutes or so. So this is pretty much a wrap. We ended up shooting just a little portrait session with them here in this cool greenhouse. And so we were able to get a little bit more of the bride and groom. I love the stuff that we were able to get today. It's been a really weird wedding. So definitely a new experience for me. I have learned a lot about our new kind of Fuji system. Uh, hopefully you have as well. Guys, thank you for watching. Um, make sure you're giving this video a like. If you've taken anything away from it today, give us a subscribe. We're gonna be doing more kind of behind the scenes videos. Hopefully they'll get better over time and more normal. We're probably gonna do some high end weddings this summer as well. Um, this one was kind of just like a cool, you know, local wedding and uh, we had a good time producing this film with Mark, with Elise. Congratulations, guys. 
Guys, we will see you next time right here on The Wedding Film School.